Arushi, you can start now. Yes, ma'am. Education breeds confidence. Confidence breeds hope. And hope breeds peace. Good evening and a very warm welcome to one and all present here. I take immense pleasure in welcoming you all to the Literary Regal lecture series organized by the Department of English at Maharani Lakshmi Ammani College for Women as part of our Golden Jubilee celebrations. A special welcome to our guest speaker of the evening, Mr. Vaseem Akram, Assistant Professor, Drupadunga University. Hearty welcome to you, sir. I am Arushi A. Singh from second year BCom and will be the MC for today's event. Let us begin our session on an auspicious note by invoking the blessings of the Almighty. I would like to request Arpita Shanbhog to lead the prayer. Good evening all. One day penny nage gana na ta muda. One day penny nage gana na ta. One day penny nage gana na ta muda. One day penny nage gana na ta. Banda vigna kale yo gana na ta muda. Banda vigna kale yo gana na ta muda. Vandi peni nage gana na ta muda. Vandi peni nage gana na ta. In the Ravana no mother in the Nina Puji Sade, in the Ravana no mother in the Nina Puji Sade, Sandarana the Ligana Nata, Sandarana the Ligana Nata, and the Penina Gagana Nata, Mother, and the Penina Gagana Nata. Vandi peni nage gana na ta mudal vandi peni nage gana na ta Mangala muruti guru ranga vithala na pada Mangala muruti guru ranga vithala na pada Inga de baji pe gana na ta Inga de baji pe gana na ta deva Mandi peni nage gana na ta mudal Mandi peni nage gana na Vandi peni nage gana na ta muda. Vandi peni nage gana na ta. 
ವಂದಿ ಪೇ ನೀನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ವಂದಿ ಪೇ ನೀನಗೆ ಗಣನಾಥ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಅರ್ಪಿತಾ ಐ ವುಡ್ ನಾವ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಕಾಲ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ಸ್ತುತಿ ಟು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ದಿ ಅಗಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ಯಾದರಿಂಗ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಹರ್ಷಿ making the beginning is one third of the work a very good afternoon to one and all present here i stuti era from second year pbz heartily welcome you all or to this webinar on writing research article i am privileged to welcome our respected principal dr shashikala a to this webinar today's guest of honor and speaker professor wasim akram welcome sir a warm welcome to the head of the english department professor samya p and the faculty members lastly greetings to my batchmates who are present in this session i once again extend a warm welcome to each one of you i look forward to have a very well participation and also let us make use of this wonderful opportunity to get knowledge about this session thank you stuti I would now like to request Nikita Verma to introduce our resource person for today's session, Mr. Vaseem Akram. Thank you, Arushi. A very good evening to everyone present here today on this webinar on writing a research article. Honorable Principal Ma'am Dr. A. Shashikala, Principal Maharani Lakshmi Amani College for Women, respected Professor Soumya P., HOD English Department, and fellow associates. I am Nikita Verma from second year BSc CZBT and today I am profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce the chief guest for the evening and he is none other than Mr Wasim Akram he is the assistant professor in the English department of collegiate education government of Karnataka Nurpatunga University he is a gold medalist in BA and a first ranker in MA in gender studies Along with that, he is also a first ranker in CGS and Best NSS Volunteer of the year 2012. He also has a teaching experience of many years in various reputed colleges. He has published five papers in nationally reviewed journals and two in international journals. He has attended seven state and national level guest lectures as a resource person and also has conducted three full day workshops. Now, I request Mr. Vaseem Akram to address all of us and cast the light of his knowledge upon us. His comments are quite essential for students who want to be like him one day. We would be delighted with your knowledge and expertise in every way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Nikita. A research paper, as we all know, is a type of academic writing that provides an in-depth analysis, evaluation, or interpretation of a single topic based on empirical evidence. Research papers are a bedrock of modern science and the most effective way to share information across a wide network. Writing and presenting a research paper is not a piece of cake that we can all agree on. I would now like to request Mr. Vaseem Akram to guide us through the process of writing research articles the do's and don'ts and the ways to present our work effectively over to you sir and we are gladly looking forward to the session ahead thank you ms arushi am i audible yes sir you are audible thank you uh, respected principal madam madam somia of the english department and uh, all the other participants a very good evening to you all i wish to share this opportunity to shed a little bit of light on this very important topic given to me that is uh, writing a research paper yes, now uh, am i allowed to do the screen share yes sir yeah okay is this uh, visible yes sir yes sir thank you all right ma'am so let's begin now um, before we actually get into what is a research paper what is academic writing and all that stuff let me just uh, tell you research happens to be the foundation of development of the corpus of knowledge if not for research if not for this inquisitive mind 
if not for the passion that we human beings have we would still be living in those ages where people would uh, still be hunters we would be uh, gatherers we would still be using uh, wooden sticks if not for research i say this because for the wheels of modern science and technology to move ahead the oil that is needed is research so it is a very welcoming a uh, situation that your college has uh, selected this particular topic to be presented today i say this because any college any college with has a reputation will definitely have at least one research paper publication and presentation as a part of its curriculum and syllabi at least in one semester of the whole course it gives me immense pleasure to see that this college is one such i'm pretty sure that you all would be indulging into research writing if not now at least in the near future before you all leave the college as young graduates about to change the world i'm pretty sure at least once you would be asked to write a research paper but mind you the research papers uh, limitations do not stop here you see research today is inevitable mind you the moment let us assume we we are uh, we are shopping online let us assume that uh, we shop online do you think you and i will just stop looking at just one particular website and we will zero in on things do we do that children no sir yeah uh, what what do we do what do we do instead we look through different websites look at people's reviews yes we look at reviews we compare we contrast we see what is the quality what is the pricing there are so many other factors which come into play just before we select a simple item right that itself is research now research pervades our life day in and day out now for example a year after now you would be a full fledged graduate going out into the society you will be expected either to start working as a professional or you would be expected to continue your studies and do your pg now in either case i am pretty sure you are not going to just blindly follow someone blindly just accept what others say and go and do things on uh, somebody else's say right what are you going to do you are going to access this area of research you are going to think about what are the qualities that i look when i have to apply for a job what are the prerequisites that i look when i have to apply for a pg now all this is research now here in this particular slide i have given just a, a, a small uh, example of what an actual research is now it is an intensive intensive search with the purpose of becoming certain now what do you mean by this purpose of becoming certain now there is something which is which is gathering your mind which is something uh, there is something which is uh, bothering you now what are you supposed to do you think about it you ask people you try to get an understanding of it you try to gain knowledge about that that is what is research where you want to become more certain about it now let us let us assume that one particular day let us assume that every saturday most of the girls in your college are wearing black now this is something which you have seen but you know that okay next saturday too the girls will wear black most of the girls will be in the black now what are you doing here you are putting your mind on something based on your assumption now your assumption as such will not become research your assumption will become a certainty when you go deep into it you have to check about why are they wearing it like this you have to check why is it only on a saturday you have to check what is the background that the girls come from now when you think about all this this is what is a research all right now it is a systematic study or an investigation in order to gain knowledge why why do you think you get, why do you think you do research especially when it comes to academic research you do it so that you want to gain knowledge now what do you mean by this gaining knowledge that you want to have a mastery over a subject and at the end i would like to say it adds to the knowledge corpus what do you mean by knowledge corpus now assuming we all started with a keypad phone right if you i don't know if you were uh, born then earlier the the first generation of mobile phones that we had were those huge sets it would be almost uh, almost uh, 
a meter long uh, phone wherein you had a keypad wherein you had an antenna and all that now that was the knowledge corpus that was available during that time it was only because of research that that long phone that heavy phone which which was so cumbersome to carry around has evolved into a into a point where today you and i can fold it and as well keep it in our pockets and it is so lightweight it is so much more faster now how do you think all this happened all this happened only because of the help of a research all right now moving ahead the next question that comes in front of us is what is an article now before i get into this let me tell you why why do you think it is an important thing for you to understand research writing along with academic research now mind you there are quite many different types of researches available all right now for example i told you that even before you buy a let us say a simple cosmetic or let us say a simple mobile or a let us say a simple laptop you do a lot of research right now this is not backed by any theory as such but the moment you come to academic the moment you come to the field of academics it is backed by theory now what happens here you have you come to the realm of something called as the academic articles now what are those academic articles there are a few words here which you have to pay attention to these are the articles written by professionals in a given field now mind you what do you mean by a professional now for example if i have let us say a toothache or if i have let us say a stomach ache i am not going to go to my neighbor and ask him what should i do or i am not going to go to a neighbor and ask her what should i do what would i do i would go to a professional who is supposed to be a, a knowledgeable person in that particular field right so your academic articles are considered to be good when it is given by a professional now for example you being a student of science you being a student of arts you being a student of commerce your word on that particular field carries more weightage than the commoners word all right so let's continue the definition here they say they are edited by the author's peers and often take years to publish now mind you if you are supposed to publish a good article in a good international journal of a repute i'm pretty sure it is a process which requires a minimum of one and a half to two years what happens first you send an article they review it it's a blind peer review mind you what do you mean by a peer review where a group of editors sit and review your article checking whether have you copied it from somewhere or is it just taken from somewhere or is it something which is already done or is it something which has not have a proper backing and all that all that is taken care in the in the peer review now that sort of peer review you are multiplying it into three times when you go for an international article international journal i mean now what is the characteristics of what is the characteristic of an academic article the language is very formal and will contain words and terms typical to the field now what is this called as in in english grammar we call them as jargons now for example in a medical article you will always find terms and terminologies associated with the field of medicine in the in the field of uh, commerce you will always find now let us say you just immediately talk about debentures you immediately talk about liabilities you talk about assets you talk about liquidity now mind you all these words are not the common parlance word not people on a day to day basis use these words so this academic writing itself states that it is a writing by a professional read by professionals all right that is the reason why you keep the long you keep the language very formal and you use a lot of jargon in your writing now the author's name will be present as will their credentials when you are writing an academic article you are supposed to own it when you write an article you are supposed to write your name you are supposed to write your field you are supposed to write your designation where you work and all those things there will be a list of references that indicate where the author obtained the information or informations he or she is using in the article that's a very very important point which i have made a separate slide which i will come to it when we in the when we go through the process all right now moving ahead now let us get a clear idea about what are the components of a research article it is very important that we know the components of an components of a research article because when you have all these components listed in your article then it is considered to be a standard article which 
you can pass it on to the journals which you can pa pass it on to different subscriptions where they will value your writing because it is systematic. Now, I'll also tell you why, why it should be this systematic when you're writing an article. Now, assuming you, uh, we have a student A who has done some research on fashion technology. We have student B who has done some research in sericulture and we have student C who has done some research in fisheries. Now, mind you, all these three students would have definitely made extensive research based on the knowledge available, based on the information available in their field. Now, imagine all these three students start writing the article in the way they like. First, they come up with methodology, then comes up with abstract, then comes up with summary, then comes up with references. This will not be accepted. Why? Because there has to be the standardization of knowledge. Now, what do you mean by standardization of knowledge? Now, take for take take example of your own course, the course that you're doing, it might be your BSc, it might be your BA, it might be your BCom. There is a progression, right? When you come to the first semester, a certain amount of topics are given to you, which are thoroughly explained to you. And in the second semester, there is an application of the topics that are explained to you in the first semester. Yes or no? In the same way, Imagine if three different courses have different, different ways of teaching in a haphazardous manner. Will there be any sort of a decorum? Will there be any sort of a standardization? Why is it that is always in the final semester, you are supposed to come up with a project, you are supposed to come up with internship. Why is it not in the first semester? Because there is a standardization of process. All right. In the similar way, when you're talking about a research article, this is the standard procedure. This is the standard parts of a research article, which must be there for it to be considered as a good article. Now, <clears throat> what are these? There are there is an abstract, there is a thesis statement, there is literature review, there is methodology, there are results, there is a conclusion, there are recommendations, and at the end, there is there is a reference. Now. What I will be doing is I will try to take you through each and every of these uh, points, which we will discuss in detail. Firstly, what do you mean by an abstract? What is an abstract? Here I've given it as a summary of the research article. Now, see, whenever you are publishing your article, whenever you send your article to any journal or any conference or any symposium, you will not be sending your full article. Usually it happens that the summary of that article is given first and that summary is called as an abstract. Now, what, what does it contain? It will explain the main claims that you have made in the article. Now, for example, they're taking the same example as girls wearing black on Saturday in my college. All right. If that happens to be your research article, there is an abstract that you have to come up with it. Now, what is, what is that abstract? The abstract will explain that why you have selected this article, what are you dealing with it, and how do you wish to conclude this? All that will be as a summary, which will be called as an abstract, followed by a very important keywords. Now, as I told you, you will have your own terms and terminologies depending on whichever domain that you come from. Now, those terms and terminologies will be given as keywords because your research article will be revolving around it. All right. So you are arguing in the paper whatever your research is concentrating upon. Why? Why is this? Because this particular abstract will answer the why and how of the article. What do you mean by this why and how of the article? Why have you selected this article? Is the first question that you will be answering in the abstract. And the second question is, if you have selected the article, what is it that you're coming up with as something that is new, something that is not already been told? All right. That's a very important aspect when it comes to your abstract. It talks about the aims of the study. Why? Why? The reason you have to state very clearly is why have you started writing this article in the first place? Now, mind you, <clears throat> whenever you write an article, it should always come from your sheer interest. All right. Now, for example, I have students sometimes come to me and they ask a topic on which to write an article. I always advise them that the topic that I would give you that you have to write a research article on this topic would the topic would always be my topic. It is something which I am interested in. 
it is not necessary that my student also is interested in the same thing. Now, I might be interested in comics, but my student might be interested in, let us say, LGBTQ literature. All right. So one thing that you have to very clearly keep in mind is your abstract talks about how passionately you have done your research on one particular topic. And if you want to get that passion in your research, you have to see to it that the topic is yours. Most of the times, I'm pretty sure the teachers listening to me will agree to this point that most of the times, students select the topics which the teachers give them. Why? Because it is quite convenient. Why, why again? Because if you have to come up with a topic, you must have done extensive reading. All right. Now, taking, taking the example of literature, uh, let us assume that you are reading a, a British novel you find something which is very disturbing there. Now, let us say you, you read a British novel where uh, the, the caricature of an Indian is given as a black Indian who comes from the land of snake charmers. Now, that disturbs you. You're like, oh my goodness, why, why have they written something like this about India? Now, that disturbance is very important. Why? Because the disturbance allows you to think. The question comes up in your mind, why? And to find the answer to that question, what will you do? You will read another British writer during that particular time to check whether what have they spoken about the Indians at that time. And if you find a similarity between the two writers, there is your research article. You start doing research. Why have they said like that? All right. So your abstract will become extremely, extremely attractive if you have based your research article on the passion not just for the sake of doing an article. All right. Now, let's go to the next term. That is the thesis statement. Now, what is the thesis statement? It is a sentence, sometimes also a group of sentences, which clearly states the overview of the study. That is, why have you taken up the study? What are you going to do with the study? All right. Your thesis statement will not have, you will not have the results of the study. Now, let us say, now, for example, assuming that the girls wearing black on that particular Saturday. Now, your thesis statement will be, most of the girls in my college wear black dress on Saturday because of a religious connotation. Now, mind you, you have made a claim here. All right. Now, the claim can be true, can be false. Now, the truth of the claim or the falseness of the claim comes only when you do the research. All right. So this is your thesis statement where you are claiming that, look, this is how I see things. All right. Now, what happens the moment you give your uh, thesis statement, it validates the need of the study. That means, yes, this is something which I have found. This is something which I think is true. That is why I'm trying to study this. All right. Then later, your study might lead you to a different answer. That is secondary. That is always secondary. All right. You can always say, fine, this was my thesis statement, but the result have come this. So this thesis statement is wrong. All right. See, children, one, one thing that you have to very clearly understand is in research, there is nothing called as a right or a wrong. All right. In fact, let me just share a small anecdote with you. Thomas Alva Edison. Uh, anybody who is Thomas Alva Edison? The inventor of the bulb. Inventor of the bulb. Very good, very good. So the inventor of the bulb. Apparently, he was uh, being interviewed in front of thousands of hundreds of journalists and a very uh, smart journalist, he stood up and he asked, how, 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 does, how does this technology of yours work? He immediately gave the reasons. He said that, okay, this has to be done. You have to have a bulb. It has to have a filament. This, there has to be an electricity and all that. And everybody started clapping. This overly smart gentleman as a journalist, he once again questioned him by telling that, look, I think you are a, everybody calls you a genius, but I think you're a fool. Why? Because you immediately gave out the whole research, the, the whole uh, purpose of your life. You have given it every, you have given it so easily. Now, even I go home, I can do it. So what's the basic fun in, what's the basic fun left in you being called as the inventor of the electric bulb? You know, what is the answer Thomas Alva Edison gave? He said, look, my dear, uh, dear journalist, you know only one way to know how the bulb works. I know 101 ways how it doesn't work. All right. So it needs a researcher to tick all those 101 different ways. 
that is the importance of research all right now it shows whether the topic is worth researching or not now mind you this is a very uh, controversial statement i would say but that is what is true everything under the sun is researchable you might have your teachers you might have your elders you might have people who are knowledgeable telling you look there has been quite a lot of research done among done among uh, done, done on one particular topic why do you want to do that i'm telling you please do not be buoyed by it you can still do research on that all right see shakespeare died in the 1500s even today people are conducting research on him why there is enough material to fill shiploads if you have to come up with material on shakespeare you can fill shiploads of material on shakespeare there is enough and more study done there is enough and more research done but why do you think research is still going on today why because each and every topic is not exhaustive you cannot say research is done on this particular topic the moment you say research is done that is the beginning of research getting up once again all right now it gives the scope of the study now what is mean by the scope of the study scope of the study is where you are clearly delimiting yourself on what your study is going to be now for example i myself i am doing my research on disability studies from the indian disabled writers now this is my thesis statement all right i'm doing my study on disability studies that is i'm not doing my study on anything else it has to be disability studies and secondly i am doing it on the indian disabled writers the moment i say indian disabled writers it is giving a scope for my study that is i'm going to limit myself only to the indian disabled writers i'm not going to go worry about what the english people have to say about it what the Brit what the uh, americans have written about it or what the japanese have written about it all right so in the same way coming back to your thesis statement that girls in my college wear black on saturday that is the scope of the study now what do you mean by the scope of the study it is limiting it you are talking about only the girls of or of your college most of the girls of your college and it is black and it is saturday anything apart from this your study is not concerned about it is not concerned with anything else apart from this particular thesis statement do you understand this thesis statement how important a thesis statement is now having said this let's go to the most important part of your research according to me that is literature review now firstly what do you mean by literature literature review literature need not be only the subject matter of studies for art students literature is any information that is available all right now for example if at all if i have to talk about Uh, let us say the same example that i gave you the british writers about the british writers writing about indians in the 19th century why did they use such derogatory language now what is the literature available that i can read i can read about the british society i can read about the indian society i can read about the british colonizing india i can read about the way indians were treated by the british i can read about how the writers the people who came to india how have they portrayed indians to the british all right now all this comes under the literature review now what is the literature review now for example amidst that literature review if there is a chinese writer in the same time who has written about indians i don't think so i have to worry myself with that why because my thesis statement would have clearly mentioned that i'm talking about the british writers their understanding of indians in the 19th century all right i'm not worried about what the chinese have to say or what the japanese have to say all right so my literature review gives the present state of the knowledge regarding the topic now for example if somebody has already done research in your field now let us say your senior has already done a research why girls wear black on saturday then i don't think so you have to further continue doing research on that particular topic you can change the topic you can always question why most of the girls and why not every girl you can always question why some girls are not wearing it that can be a different research but the research per se about that one particular topic is is almost uh, done why because the present state of knowledge has al already answered the question all right 
Secondly, what you are supposed to do is, what are the present studies and theories being discussed? That is very, very important. Now, for example, if I have to talk about that British writer writing about Indian in a very derogatory way, there is already a theory which is existing and that theory is called as a post-colonial theory. All right. Where Indians have written about how their image was given to the world during the colonization period. All right. So I cannot continue doing my research. How did these British writers write about Indians in such a bad way without consulting a theory called as post-colonialism? All right. Now, in the same way, for students of science, for students of commerce and all, you will have your own theories from your own particular fields, your own particular domains. All you have to do is you have to understand how that particular thing works. Now, for example, if I talk about uh, if I talk about the scattering of light, isn't that the theory which is which is given? If I talk about, let us say, the game theory, what is that? It is a theory which is given to support a particular uh, understanding, to support a particular base of knowledge. All right. So you are supposed to also know what is the theoretical backing that is there in your particular field of research. All right. Then what is the quality of the studies reviewed? Now, this is also very important where you are supposed to understand, you are supposed to take cognizance of what has been done till now about that particular topic. All right. Now, for example, coming back to our sentence of uh, girls wearing black on Saturday in your college, most of the girls wearing black. Now, what is the quality of studies reviewed? One particular teacher some 10 years ago has written about uh, girls uh, coming in this particular dress on these particular occasions. You can take that. You can also take about how a particular religious, uh, religious understanding is of that particular day. You can take that. You can also take uh, why is it why is this being followed quite a lot in women colleges? You can also take that. I'm just trying to give you a hypothetical example on what can be the literature review. Anything and everything associated with your topic, which suffices with the thesis statement, comes under your literature review. All right. Now, for example, the example that I gave about myself, that I'm dealing with disability studies in by Indian disabled writers. Now, what will be my literature review? First of all, I need to read a lot about disability. What is disability? Secondly, I need to read a lot about what is academic disability studies. Thirdly, I need to read a lot about Indian literature. What has Indian literature done till now? I have to start taking from the epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata. I have to start taking from uh, the 17th century. I have to start taking from 16th century. I have to start taking from 20th century. I have to also start thinking about how, uh, how a disabled person is shown in movies. All right. Then at the end, I come to the writers that I have selected. All right. Now, for example, if I have taken a if I've taken a blind writer like Preeti Monga, I cannot just blindly start writing about her. I have to start first with how is blindness seen in India? Now, where do you see all this blind? Where do you see the references to blindness in India? Automatically, our understanding goes immediately to Mahabharata. All right. Where we have... Uh, uh, where we have Dhritarashtra, where we have Kunti and all these people. From there, my reading has to come. All right. Why? Because from there, I will start understanding how people have seen and understood blindness. All right. So my literature review, the, the stronger your literature review is, the better your research article will be. All right. Now, lastly, and most important question is, how will your research add to the existing knowledge? That's a very, very interesting and very, very important point. Why? Because at the end of the day, whatever your research is, it has to have some sort of, a, <clears throat> of an objectivity. It must be helpful. It must be beneficial to the society. If it is not, then such a research will just become a redundant research, which will immediately be upturned by the future. All right. Now, imagine if, if at all, if you are, uh, uh, let, us, let us assume your, your campus has trees, right? 
what are you supposed to do to save the trees if that is your research that's a very good research why because you are helping in the preservation and conservation of that particular trees but imagine if you just sit under a tree and start wondering how many trees do we have how many leaves fall each day how many birds come and sit on that tree do you think that is going to be helpful it might be i'm not saying it is going to be a total futile exercise but as of now you do not find any necessity all right unless and until your research has an amount of objectivity associated with it unless and until it can be beneficial and useful to the society such research will not long last all right now having having said this let us move to the next part that is methodology now what do you mean by methodology it's a very important thing where you are demonstrating what your research methods are that is the method of obtaining data and the analysis of the data now how do you collect data is the question now for example taking the same question of you talking about most of the girls wearing black on saturdays now what data can you collect how do you collect the data do you just go sit lock yourself in the room and start uh, writing about it might be because of this it might be because of this no you don't do that a good counting people yeah sorry counting people who have worn the black dress yes very good so where do you think that uh, that comes under does it come under quantitative or qualitative quantitative sir yes you are quantifying the data right you are counting the number of people you are uh, preparing a questionnaire you are uh, you are trying to talk to them you are interviewing them so what happens is you have these two major methodologies where you will try to gather data and try to analyze the data all right both these are very very important aspects when it comes to your research writing why because having the data is not sufficient you must also know how to analyze the data now now for example the the questions that uh, would come if you have the topic of uh, most of the girls wearing black on uh, saturdays those questions must be in direct relationship with the research that you are being con- that you are conducting now for example what can the questions be the questions can be why do you prefer to wear black on saturday uh, is it is it a cultural representation is it a religious representation or all that do you think if you ask them how many people stay in your locality or do you think if you ask them what is the name of your pet is that going to help you no sir our questions must be basically related to what we are trying to find out exactly that's why the moment you put up a thesis statement for yourself you are giving it a scope all right and that scope will definitely channelize your methodology in what way you want to take it forward all right so having spoken about methodology let us come to the results now any data any data and any analysis will get you a certain set of results all right now what you are supposed to do is it is very very important the findings of your study and the significance of your research these results are the the ultimate findings of your research the ultimate findings of your hard work now for example if you say that 90% of all the respondents the questionnaires that you prepared have given an answer telling that yes we wear it because it is a cultural representation or if 70 to 80 percent say we wear it because our families ask us to wear then you have a result there right that result you are theorizing it based on the understanding that you have gathered all right why because firstly we stay in a country like india which is a multicultural society uh, we have a major uh, we have a, a majority religion we have the cultural aspirations of people belonging to that particular religion we have a set of signs and omens associated on saturdays we have a set of uh, rituals that are being done on saturdays we have a color which is associated on saturdays now what is all this all this is the theoretical backing that you have now the answer what you have got 
you have got the answer that 80% of the students whom you have asked, they all have given the same answer telling that yes, it is the religious connotation which I'm trying to present. So what is happening? Your thesis statement, your literature review and your results, all the three are converging to a same point. If that happens, then understand that yes, your research that you have done is right. Your, the path that you have taken is right and the solutions that you have got, the results that you have got are perfect. All right. Imagine if you had literature review which spoke about all that and if only 3% of the people respondent said it is cultural and 97% of the respondents say, no, I just like to wear black on Saturday. Then your research would have faltered somewhere. Do you get it? So your results are the, I would say, most of the times, ultimate examples of what and way in which your research has gone. Now, what do you do with these results? You just can't keep the results at that. All right. What are you expected to do? You are expected to conclude that. Now, tell me, how do you conclude your results? You conclude your results in a by presenting it in a very, very orderly manner. You start telling that, look, this is the reason I started my research. This was the literature review that I got. This is the method I used, and this is the result I got. All right. If all these four aspects are in tandem, if it follows one another, if it is a very proper progression, then consider your research to be success. Right. Now, it explains the results arrived in a simple and comprehensible manner. Now, as I told you, you might have you might have data which is tons and tons in size that particular data would have would have yielded a certain set of results those set of results are not going to come to your helping unless and until you conclude them in your own context all right now for example you have uh, you have a set of data which says there are 70% uh, of the college going uh, adults are smokers assuming that all right now that is the data and you have the results telling that yes 28% uh, of girls and 72% uh, of boys amongst the 70% are smokers now that is your result that you have got because of the data how do you conclude you have to conclude by saying that yes they are adults they have a right to choose their life they they have to have a say in whatever they are doing but what they are doing is right or wrong will be depending upon how you frame your thesis statement all right. Now, in your conclusion, you can say, okay, fine, all these girls wearing black on Saturday have their uh, religious affiliations. That is why they're following it or the cultural affi affiliation. That is why they're following it. That will be the conclusion that you give. All right. So, see, concluding a particular research depends upon how you wish to see it. All right. Accepting it or rejecting it, it is the future which will decide. Your thesis can, your hypothesis can always lead to a thesis. <coughs> and that thesis will become antithesis in the immediate future. Now, for it, you know, what, do, what do you mean by this hypothesis, thesis, and antithesis? Now, for example, you have an idea, you have done some research, you have produced that idea, telling that, look, this is what I have got. The antithesis would be, some other person in the future might tell that, no, what you have got is wrong. This is what is the present reality. All right. So it all depends upon how you conclude it. Now, as I told you, the moment the data say 70% of all the college going population is a is smoker. Now tell me, but just by this particular sentence, can you say the sentence is negative or positive? Negative. <coughs> negative, sir. Negative, sir. Okay. How, how do you say that the sentence is negative? Smoking is bad to help me, sir. So. Yeah, see, now this is what you as a researcher must always keep in mind. That is, you must have very strong objectivity. Now, you, assuming that you are a non-smoker, you say that, yes, smoking is bad. Imagine there is a person in your class who is a chain smoker. All right. Now, I give this particular sentence to her. Do you think she will tell me the same thing that, yes, smoking is bad? That is why I say this. No. No, sir. Exactly. No. So you as a researcher must always take the data very, very objectively. That is, you must never allow your prejudices 
you must never allow your biases to come in between. All right. Now, taking the example of the, let us assume LGBTQ that I gave you. If you start your research with a bias that, yes, <coughs> all these people, uh, these gays, lesbians and all, they don't have any right to live. They don't have any right in the society. If you start with your research with this particular mindset, I'm telling you, your research will never be good. Why? Because you have allowed your emotions to take over your understanding of the subject. All right. So coming back to the sentence that I made, that 70% of the adult population, college-going students are smokers, is neither positive nor negative. It all depends upon how you conclude. All right. Now, if you remember, just a few moments ago, I was telling <coughs> that, yes, college-going students are adults. They have the right to decide whatever they want. If I start my sentence like this, what am I doing here? I'm trying to create a positivity around it. All right. But if I start my sentence by telling that smoking is very bad, smoking is very injurious to health, that is why all these 70% of all the college-going students must be taught a thorough lesson. All the shops around them should be closed. Now, what is happening here? I'm doing a negative impact. All right. So the data and the result that you have it all depends upon how you see the data and how you analyze the results. All right. Depending on the thesis statement, if your thesis statement is trying to prove that, yes, wearing black on Saturdays is wrong, then you can frame your conclusion in a way where it can suffice. Yes, look, because this is the data, this is the result I've got. That's why it's wrong. You can say that. But if your thesis statement is, is, is being positive, then you have to mold your conclusion into a positive way. All right. <coughs> now, coming to the next slide, we have a very, very important thing. Now, what is this important thing? That is references. Now, mind you, what do you mean by references? It is a list of all the books, articles, and journals that you have referred to. Now, mind you, children, it is very, very important. You as a budding scholar must always keep in mind getting ready-made articles from Google is very easy. All right. All that you have to do is just sit in front of Google, type. The Google will give you the answers. You will have articles which are ready. Take five, six different articles, take a paragraph from here, take a paragraph from there, put it together. Fine, you have a good article and just add a few lines of your own. And you say this, this is my article. It is extremely, extremely unethical. And in the terms of academia, we call it as plagiarism. All right, where it is a simple cut, copy, paste of somebody else's work. All right. It is a very, very bad thing to do when you are in the field of academics and when your field of and when your field and when you are in the field of research and publication. It is a very important thing that you should never do. That is the reason why it is called as citation that is most important. Now, what is citation? Citation means where you are acknowledging the source from which you have got the sentence or you have got an idea. All right. Now, for example, when you are reading, when you are working, let us say, on that particular aspect of uh, uh, why, uh, why, why is, why are the Indians portrayed in a negative way by the British in the 19th century? When you are writing an article about this, there might be an article which is something similarly related to your particular topic. When you read that, you get a lot of ideas. Now, what do you do? You just use the ideas without acknowledging the source, which is wrong. Now, what you must do is you are supposed, you are supposed to find a citation for that. And how do you find a citation? The moment you have a particular or an interesting sentence from that particular article, you copy paste that under quotes. And the moment you clear up the quotes, you are supposed to open your parentheses your brackets and you must write the name of the writer and the year. Now this too will be done in text. That is when you're writing your article in the paragraph itself, you will write it by quoting the particular writer. Now at the end of it, in the, in the column of your work cited or bibliography, you're supposed to write down who is the writer, the title of the book, the page number from which you have taken, the year in which it was published and the place it was published. And if at all, if that book 
has an ISBN or an IAS, ISSN number, you are supposed to give that ISBN or ISSN number. Now, why is this given? Because this cross-reference is very, very important when it comes to academic writing. Assuming that I am doing a, I am doing my PhD on disability studies. Tomorrow, a student wants to do a, a PhD thesis on disability studies and he or she wants to select Indian female writers. Now, there is a difference, right? What did I tell you? That is my area of studies. I'm doing it on Indian disabled writers. Now, he is going to take Indian female disabled writers. Now, there is a change there. Now, what he is supposed to do is he is supposed to take works that I have already done and cite in his work to say that, look, I know that my previous, my predecessor has done something. I wish to acknowledge that. It is the same acknowledgement that you all are supposed to do when you are doing your research writing. That is, if at all, if you have your, if your, if your predecessors have written something about uh, the topic that you're working on and it is available in a journal, you're supposed to cite it. You're supposed to give the reference for that. Yes. And your reference will act as an acknowledgement for the scholarship and the hard work that they have done. Imagine you write a research article, you take six months, you are painfully reading every day, you go to the library, you're interviewing people and everything. It's a group activity of four girls sitting together and doing it. On the last day, just the day before submission, a girl stands up and says, okay, fine, you all have done your work. I'm going to give all your names there. But what I will do is I will be the one who will be sending it to the journal. You all agree. And what this girl would have done? Just before sending it to the journal, she would have taken off the three other girls' name and she would have retained only her name and sent that as her own individual title. Don't you think that you as an individual will feel extremely bad for doing it? It is the same thing which every other academician feels when his or her work is not given a proper citation. A proper acknowledgement must be given. All right. Now, these are the important parts that must be there when you are doing your research and when you are going to write an academic article based on the research. All right. Now, I, I didn't want to burden you with a lot more slides and uh, the way we write and all. Why? Because each and every one of you come from different domain and you all have your different ideas. Now, what we will do is in whatever time is uh, available, we will try to analyze how you go about individually as a budding writer. So I keep the platform open now. You are free to ask me any question regarding whatever I have just spoken. Or if you have something to add to it, please feel free. Thank you so much, sir. That was a really wonderful session and we got clear cut ideas on how we have to frame our research work. So now opening the session to all the participants present on the Zoom meeting, as well as on the YouTube link, you can post your queries either on the chat box here or on the YouTube link uh, shared, through, shared to you. I now uh, request Chaitra Jia to take over the moderating session. Albert Sen says, research is to see what everybody else has seen and to think what nobody else has thought. A very good evening to everyone present here. I am Chaitra from BCom C. Today, I'm glad to moderate question and answer session with you all. And my first question to you, sir, is from Nikita Verma. Sir, is it adv advisable to get references from blogs or those websites that do not have specific authors indicated? Also, is it adv advisable to get references from those websites which do not indicate a year but instead have a copyright? Yes, you can, you can always do that. But as I tell you, you must always acknowledge it. Now, for example, if it is by an anonymous blog, do write it as an anonymous blog, just copy paste the website and also mention the date <coughs> on which you have accessed it. That's a very important thing when you are giving the citations 
for uh, references of websites or uh, particular blogs or uh, your uh, e uh, email e uh, electronic journals and all that you are supposed to acknowledge the site by copy pasting the site at the same time the date and the time on which you have accessed it becomes more important why because today it might be anonymous it might be a blog tomorrow the the, the blog might just become defunct it might not be but you have a proof saying that yes it was on this particular day that i have accessed it all right and uh, don't be under the impression that uh, any information or any knowledge comes only from uh, academia or from standardized institutions not at all you have excellent information coming from blogs you have excellent information coming from blogs today all right you you uh, you are free to access it but the only thing is you are supposed to give a proper citation for that okay yes sir thank you sir yeah. my next question is that is from neetu paranjali sir as you explain abstract this comes in the beginning the conclusion also tells about what we saw in the article so how do we make conclusion to sound like it is telling you about a decision or verdict uh your your conclusions will not be decisions or verdict i would say at the end of the day every research is an opinion backed by a theory all right now <clears throat> i i i give you the example of those uh, smokers right now it is your opinion that if you want to say yes they are individuals they have a right to do that's your opinion it's not a decision or a verdict why because the moment you become very decisive the moment you say this is what it is then you are killing the scope of the research for further for further generations the moment you say yes this is what i understood you are being open ended where in the future your research can always be questioned and any good research mind you is good only when the research surpasses all right what do you mean by this research surpasses where i come up with the conclusion today that yes all the indian disabled writers are uh, showing this particular aspect of disability tomorrow if somebody says no what you have told is wrong this is how it is that means yes i have made an understanding i have taken the knowledge a step higher on which somebody else is already somebody else is building it all right it has to be in the form of a ladder just assume that you are standing you are standing in front of a staircase you are standing at staircase number 1 the other person is standing at staircase number 2 the third person is standing at staircase number 3 now you the standing the person standing in staircase number 3 has always got to thank the first and the second person all right that is when their research gets validity so it is not the question of being uh, being very decisive and giving a verdict there are no verdicts in research there are opinions how strong your opinion is how back to your opinion is that is what matters all right if you have read a lot if you have done a lot of review of literature your opinion will become very strong why because you would have given cross references you would have cited from other writers you would have uh, you would have told about what is actually happening here and this is what i feel tomorrow to falsify that research becomes extremely difficult why because you have done a very strong grounding okay <laughs> Yes, thank you. My next question is that uh, it's from Lavanya, sir. If we choose more than one topic for writing a research article, then could you please tell us about how can we write the abstract and the thesis statement for articles? Firstly, never ever take more than one topic for your research. right it might be a very correlative topic you might talk about the british and the indians at the same time but your topic at the end of the day must always be singular that is when you can focus all right the more divergent your topics become to to have a particular coherence to have a particular point of reference it becomes extremely difficult all right you will understand this only when when once you start writing i don't know how many of you have uh, Uh, written an article and published if you have or written an article anyone stuti rao says yes she has she has raised her hand very good uh, stuti uh, if you can unmute yourself and just share your view 
Is it possible for you to write an article with two different topics or two topics? No, sir. Yeah. Uh, as as a beginner, to write a single one took me a lot of time because I had to search so many things and understand what exactly I have to write. Yes. Yes. True. So, as a beginner, I would also say even as an evolved writer tomorrow, the more you focus on a single topic, the better it would be. Why? Because your your academic acumen. will be concentrated on that particular topic all right yes sir so my next question is so wilson minster once said if you steal from one man it's plagiarism but if you steal from several it's research my question to you is, sir is that in academic writing how can we avoid plagiarism yeah see i would say uh the statement is uh, quite a funny one but not practical i would say all right see um uh, assuming that you go to a terrace and you find uh, quite many different clothes being dried there all right you like a clothing you pick it up you like another clothing you pick it up you might like it you might pick it up but it is not necessary that that clothing has to fit you right in the same way you are free to take it from any website any journal uh, you people might not call it plagiarism why because the software can detect only when it has been taken directly from a website all right or from a book now assuming that you take a paragraph you write it in your own words at the end of the day it is plagiarism all right you might not be identified by that particular website but at the end of the day you know very well that yes this is not something which is mine all right and that you cannot claim as research mind you there are 101 shortcuts to do things but the confidence that you get after having toiled after having done your hard work that confidence can never be gotten by this shortcut imagine if you have a if you have a novel that is part of your syllabus you can you can read the whole novel by taking a lot of time you can also go to google and just read a summary or you can also go to youtube and just watch a small video but the authority that you get having read the novel is incomparable to any of the videos to any of the summary might be written by the best academicians might be uh, shown by the best actors so in the same way when you are getting into the field of research always keep this in mind there is no shortcut for research you can never have a shortcut for research unless and until you get into the difficulties of research you will never be able to create a name for yourself all right yeah. yes sir thank you sir uh, so the next question uh, is from arpita she says that uh, sir is it necessary to always have a practical perspective on a given topic than thinking emotionally i mean not to let our thoughts bother our research no i would say it is very important that you have to be objective now for example i'll give you my own example since i was telling you that i'm doing it on disability studies i have to interview quite many people who are disabled the 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 responses that they give i have to collect it with a very very uh, objective state of mind i cannot allow my emotions to collude with that the moment i say my my uh, my emotions come to into picture now let us say for example i'm meeting a blind person and the blind person is saying that yes i want to be independent and all that and if i give it in my report telling that ayo papa look at that blind person how sorry i feel for that particular lady what am i doing there i am trying to break the identity that that blind person has created for himself or herself and i am trying to overpower my emotions on that particular identity which is always always very very negative all right you must never ever i am and i also should tell you it is very difficult because at the end of the day we are all human beings and we are all emotional beings but mind you a good research only happens when there is objectivity which is very difficult once again i am telling you it is very difficult but you must strive to attain that objectivity it is only then that you can do it imagine if you want to be a let us say a good class monitor or if you want to be a good class representative how will you be a good class representative when 
you are favoring your own uh, friends and trying to criticize and demean the other people who are not your friends will you be a good class representative or do you think if your teachers start doing this in your class will you enjoy the class definitely not right in the same way your research will have any validity will have any standing only and only if you remain objective okay yes sir thank you sir my next question is that is from nikita sir how do i how do how to find research gap in review article when all of it looks perfect yeah a uh, research gap is one thing which uh, i have not mentioned in my ppt let me just tell you what is a research gap research gap is that particular lacuna that your research is going to fill all right now for example the example that i gave you about the british novelist writing about indians people would have written a lot about let us say from the british perspective cultural perspective religious perspective and you are trying to talk about the academic perspective all right now you you are talking about academic perspective itself is the space that is going to be filled by your research all right now having this is the research gap now mind you reviews at the end of the day are also opinions all right opinions now for example if uh, if at all if uh, tomorrow your teacher comes to your class and if she asks okay you all yesterday attended a program how was the how was the meeting interaction and everybody says the meeting was extremely boring i did not just enjoy the class it was a waste of one and a half hours of my life at the end of the day not just because everybody says it is not going to become the reality it is still going to remain a review all right do you understand if you have 100 students and if all the 100 say yes i dislike the class it is still a review it is still an opinion it cannot become the reality it cannot become the objective all right so immaterial of what others have to say which might sound very similar which might sound very superfluous i would say it is you and your instinct which makes you a good researcher if your instinct says yes there is some problem here <coughs> mind you you will have achieved a good research thank you sir next question is from arushi sir is it accept acceptable to take references from previously published research papers yes 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 it's very much acceptable you can but there is a limit to that the limit is see any university will allow the plagiarism up to 5% if it's a very standard university 5% or if it's a normal university they might go up to 10% that is in your let us say if you have an article written about 10000 words they might allow you to have 500 to 700 words which are directly copied from somebody else all right that is fine you can always take it but you must as i to it as i as i was telling you you must give a proper citation to it all right it might be this only one person you would have taken let us say assuming that x mr x has written this you have given only mr x's citations but it is important that you acknowledge mr x <coughs> yes all right thank you sir yeah. next question is from sadhana sir what is synopsis sorry she asks what hmm. is synopsis yes a synopsis i would say is a standardized summary a standardized abstract all right that is what a synopsis is where you are uh, see when do you actually give a synopsis synopsis is not something that you send before your article needs to be published a synopsis is something which grants you the permission to do research all right it is usually done at a phd level where you give a synopsis telling that look this is what i want to do this is what the research will be and this is what i will be using my methodology and all that that will be given in front of a panel to be approved now that will be called as a synopsis the shortest version of that is an abstract your abstract will not be more than 300 words whereas your synopsis can run into 20 pages depending on uh depending on the purpose of your research if your research if your the purpose of your research is to get a phd then it will have to be a synopsis it cannot be an abstract and if your uh, purpose of the research is to 
publish an article, then it has to be an abstract. It cannot be a synopsis. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My next question is, how do I know the strength and weaknesses of the method I choose? Uh, there is only one way. That is trial and error. All right. Unless and until you try, you will never know whether you're right or wrong. And mind you, you should never, ever feel disheartened when you are doing research. Now, just take, for example, all the scientists in the world. Do you ever see any young scientist who is in his 20s? Definitely not. Most of the scientists you see would have achieved fame and global <coughs> acclaim only in their 50s, in their 60s, in their 70s. Why? Because they would be constantly in this trial and error, trial and error method. All right. It is only then that they achieve greatness. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much for moderating the Q&A session, Chaitra. And thank you so much, sir. Uh, all the queries on the chat box were completely explained by you uh, very clearly. So thank I'm you so fine. much for that. I would now like to request uh, Neetu Parajali to render the vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Arushi. Knowledge is not power, it is only potential. Applying that knowledge is power. Understanding why and when to apply the knowledge is wisdom. A very good afternoon, everyone. I'm Nitya Parajali of second year BA PGS. And it's an honor to have been asked to offer the vote of thanks for this webinar on lecture series on the occasion of Golden Jubilee. On behalf of Maharani Lakshmi Amani College for Women and the entire fraternity of institution, here I would like to express my hearty gratitude to the speaker of today's session, Professor Wasim Akram, for sharing his graceful words. Thank you, sir, for this insightful and instructive session. I also remark proficient sense of gratefulness to our beloved principal, Dr. Shashikala, for her constant support in every best way. A special sense of gratitude to our HOD of English department, Professor Soumya Ma'am, for the innovative conceptualization on webinar. I also extend my generous thanks to the entire faculty members of English department for the leading supervision. Finally, I thank the students who have turned up in great numbers for their presence and participation in this webinar. Once again, thank you all for association devoted time for making this webinar a successful one. Thank you. Thank you so much, Neetu. I would now request uh, all the audience to raise for the college anthem.
Thank you for all to all the participants for having been participated in this session so actively. I would kindly request all of you to fill in the feedback link posted on the chat box to have to let us know about the session. Thank you so much, sir, once again, and thank you all for participating. Have a pleasant evening. I request all the participants to come on video mode so that we can have a group photo. Thank you, girls. <clears throat> Have a pleasant evening. Thank you all. Thank you, teachers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.